Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start the evening. We're going to start tonight with a public hearing for our proposed 2016-2017 budget. Uh, this is our second public hearing, and we're going to ask uh, Mr. Rice, who's our CFO, to present the information, and then when he's done, if anybody has comments, if you'll come to the podium and state your name and keep your comments to about two minutes, then we'd appreciate that. So this time I'll turn it over to Mr. Rice. Good evening, President Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. It is my pleasure to present the 2016-2017 proposed budget. Looking at our financial highlights from 2015 to 2016 and to focus on just a few, the district voters approved the 2015 bond referendum. We continue to receive recognition from the state comptroller's office for our transparency presentations, and we receive transparency stars for our traditional finances, debt obligations, and contracts and procurement disclosures. And we also received bond rating upgrades from both Moody's and Standard & Poor's. <clears throat> Texas Smart Schools, formerly known as the FAST Report, highlight success in two dimensions, uh, academic progress and cost-effective finances. CISD is one of three school districts that have received five stars, which is the highest rating for six consecutive years. Our 2015 ERG position, ERG stands for Education Resource Group, and they perform an analysis of the 200 largest districts in the state, and the goal is to be in the 1-1 box, and they also do ranking based off academic and financial performance. And as you can see, the red dot is CISD, and we are in the 1-1 box, and we're currently ranked sixth in the state. We will now look at the major components that drive the budget, and they begin with our 2016-2017 budget objectives, and they include to meet the needs for the 2016-2017 school year, to provide a competitive race for all, and additional salary adjustments for identified areas. We want to prepare for the upcoming legislative session and any possible future budget reductions. And we want to utilize any budget surplus to support our capital projects and reduce bond debt requirements. And we always want to achieve high academic outcomes in a cost-effective manner. Our 2015-2016 tax rate comparison, our tax rate of $1.28 is 48 cents lower than our tax rate was in 0506 when we were at $1.76. Our tax rate is 19 cents below our peer average tax rate and 13 cents below our closest district, which is Klein. Our general fund balance. This chart represents the fund balance of the general fund over the past 10 years. Our general fund, our fund balance over these 10 years have increased from 60 million to $121 million. And during this time, the board has transferred excess fund balance from the general fund to capital projects funds, avoiding issuing new debt and those transferred amounts are identified by year in the red blocks. If you look in 2015 column, that uh, green block, that identifies the $33 million that has been designated for uh, supporting the 2015 bond referendum. Our fund balance analysis, our 2015-2016 budget is $416.6 million. And our objective is to maintain an unassigned fund balance of 16 to 24 percent of the annual budget, which is approximately two to three months of expenses. Our projected unassigned fund balance at 831.16 is equal to $115.1 million, which is 28 percent of the budget and $15.1 million over our high end target. Having problems here with the screen. There we go. Attendance. Our state revenue estimates and campus expenditure budget allocations rely on enrollment data. We budget for expenditures based on enrollment. However, we are funded from the state based on our ADA. For the 2016 2017 budget, our estimated enrollment is 59,639 students, which is an increase of 1,400. For our state revenue budget allocation, our average daily attendance is estimated at 94% of our enrollment. Our enrollment trend, this chart shows our last nine years enrollment and our current year estimated enrollment. In 0708, our enrollment was 46,524 students. And for 1617, we're estimating 59,639 students. That is an average growth of 1,548 students. Our certified property values, our property values were certified by the appraisal district 
at $32.4 billion, which is an increase of $2.6 billion, or 8.66% over last year's values. Now that we have discussed the major components that drive the budget, we will now look at the effect that they have on the budget itself, starting with our 2016-2017 funding estimate. Our tax revenue increase based on our 8.66% AV growth generates $26.9 million. Our state, on the state revenue side, our 1,400 new students generate $11.1 .1 million. However, due to the Robin Hood effect, based on our 10.8% AV growth from 2015-2016, we realize a $28.4 million loss, resulting in a net state revenue decrease of $17.3 million. We have available surplus from the 2015-2016 budget of $19.8 million, given us total estimated available funding of $29.4 million. That is a net revenue increase equal to $9.6 million. Now looking at the expenditure side of our budget, this is our approved 2016-2017 teacher hiring schedule. It includes a raise of $1,650 with targeted equity adjustments for teachers with seven plus years of service. Our beginning teacher salary will be $51,500. <clears throat> Looking at our 2016-2017 salary increase, a 3% general pay increase on the midpoint is $9.2 million. The adjustments to the teachers with seven plus years experience is $1.5 million. Our police and auxiliary pay adjustments, $404,000. Our increased stipends for bilingual, special ed, and fine arts programs, $408,000, and other market adjustments, $207,000 for a total salary increase of $11,766,316. Personnel for growth, this is in support of our 1,400 new students. And if we look at the campus level, we're adding 93 and a half new teachers. We have 18 special ed positions, 10 and a half paraprofessionals, and four administrators for total positions at the campus of 128 at a cost of 7,015,000. At the support level, we're adding 26 position, 26 positions, 21 of those are in the operations department at a cost of $1,155,000. For a total personal additions of 154 positions for a cost of $8,170,000. Our other expense detail includes increase to our appraisal district fees of $500,000, supplies at the campus for our 1,400 new students, $150,000, uh, increases to our career and technology education program, $2 million, health insurance, the district contribution, we're increasing that contribution from $428 to $440 per employee per month at a cost of $750,000, support for the health fund, an additional $750,000, insurance, another $212,000, AP textbooks, $100,000, and we were able to realize savings in our fuel account, $750,000. For total other expense increase, $3,684,513. Our projected expenditure budget increase for 2016-2017 includes the salary increase plus targeted adjustments, $11.8 million, additional personnel, $8.2 million, other expenses, $3.7 million for total projected expenditure budget increase, $23,620,829. So now looking at the, the complete 2016-2017 projected budget, on the revenue side it includes our 15-16 revenue budget of $443.7 million. We have a projected revenue increase of $9.6 million for a projected 16-17 revenue budget of $453.3 million. On the expenditure side, our 15-16 amended expenditure budget, $423.9 million. Our salary increase and other expenses, $23.6 million for a projected 16-17 expenditure budget of $447.6 million, leaving us with a projected surplus of $5,764,256. So what's our proposal for the fund balance surplus? We're proposing to save the surplus in the general fund balance to support the 2017-2018 budget. And then if any funds are remaining, we'll use those to utilize budget surplus to support capital projects, re reduce bond debt requirements, and cover any unforeseen expenditures. <coughs> this is our proposed budget summary in a, in a pie chart format, and that includes payroll and benefits, which is about 89% of our budget, 
contracted services, a little over 5%. The largest item in there is our utilities. Uh, supplies and materials, a little over 4%. The largest item in there is our fuel. And equipment and other, 1.4%. The largest item in there is insurance. For our total 2016-2017 proposed expenditure budget of $447,580,555. This is the format that we'll be asking the board to approve the budget uh, coming up later in this evening. So our 2016-2017 pr proposed tax rate, we're requesting no change in the tax rate. We're requesting the M&O to be $1.04. Our debt service, 24 cents, for a total tax rate of $1.28 per $100 of valuation. So once again, our fund balance analysis, but we're doing this on where we project ourselves at 831.17. Once again, our proposed 2016-2017 budget is $447.6 million. Our estimated unassigned fund balance at 831.17 is $120.9 million, which is 27% of the budget and $13.5 million over our high-end target. So now, just a pro forma for our 2017-2018 budget. We have beginning revenue of $453.3 million. We have projected revenue decrease of $2.8 million for total projected revenue of $450.5 million. Our beginning expenditures of $447.6 million. We have total estimated expenditure increase of $24.7 million. <clears throat> For total projected expenditures of $472.3 million, leaving us with a potential shortfall of $21.8 million. And that is the end of our budget. Okay, thank you, Mr. Rice. If anybody has a comment, if you'll please approach the podium and state your name and make your comments. <clears throat> name is Stuart Schrader. I guess I'm going to ask you a crystal ball question or two. Um, do you all have a sense over the next three years what enrollment's <coughs> going to do and what <coughs> property appraisals might do? I know that's reaching out there. And I'm seeing some pessimism, or it seems like pessimism that I've never seen here before about, about the legislature and, <laughs> and that uh, you all are a little bit concerned. Well, we, Stuart, thank you for, for asking the questions. We are, are um, our projections for enrollment are they'll increase at relatively same rate for the next several years. Um, there's there's not a pessimism. We always prepare for the future with a legislative session coming up um, with with oil prices as they are. Um, we feel like we should be in a strong position going into the legislative session. So um, it's not a pessimistic. It's just a prepared position to be in. Um, appraised values, uh, your guess is good as mine. My guess is it's going to come down um, from, from where it is right now at 8.63. Yeah. Um, that, that, uh, I'd be very surprised if that does not come down over the next couple of years. We're using 6% for, for the 1718 <clears throat> projection. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, that concludes our budget hearing. Thank you. <coughs> Call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order that the record show a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that the notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code Chapter 551 and 613. If you would stand with me, Mrs. Bush leads us in the invocation, and Mr. Williams in the Pledges of Allegiance. Please uh, join me in the prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the much needed rain, but be with those that have encountered too much rain. As we begin the new year, we ask that you place a hedge of protection around our students, staff, and community. Please guide us as we conduct the business of the district tonight, bless our discussions, and provide a smooth start to the year next week. In your name, amen. Amen. My pleasure to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On the next slide, I pledge allegiance to the city, Texas, Texas, one state, state, under God, one and indivisible. Very much, Mrs. Bush, Mr. Williams. Uh, next item, the 2A uh, citizen participation uh, Secretary, have we have somebody signed up? Yes, we do. <clears throat> Very good. 
The next 30 minutes have been designated for public participation by patrons who have signed up to address the board in accordance with board policy BED. Please remember the board may not discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on our agenda. The board has adopted complaint policies that are de designated as secure at the lowest administrative level, a prompt and equitable resolution of complaints and concerns. These policies provide that if a resolution cannot be reached administratively, the person may appeal the administration, administrative decision to the board as properly posted agenda item. Copies of the district's complaint policies can be found on the district's website. Those who have registered to address the board will be limited to five minutes for their presentation. Delegations of five or more must appoint a representative to present their views to the board. Mrs. Godfrey, please call the first person who has signed up to address the board. Misty Perrine. Good evening, CISD board members. I am Misty Perrine, and I'm here on behalf of the Board of Directors of Bender's Landing Estates, as well as the Bender's Community's res residents. I'm also here on behalf of Andrea Collins, a resident that lives on Waterbend Cove in Bender's Landing. She would be here, however, she is on bed rest, about to deliver her third future CISD student. <laughs> We want to thank the board members and the staff for addressing our concerns, discussing solutions, and assuring us the access to the new high school will not use Waterbend Cove except for emergency access only. We still feel it would be prudent to the board to investigate other alternatives while protecting the concerns of families and residents that live on those arteries near the new school. We thank you again for your time today and in advance for including the surround communities in future discussions regarding the new high school. And we would also like to thank all of the residents from the surrounding communities in, in Bender's Landing and, and around us who are here tonight in support. We are all as excited about the new school as you are. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Next, we have Jane Gustafson. Hi, good evening. Um, I'm Jane Gustafson. I'm one of the board members for the Bender's Landing POA. Um, I'm on the same topic as Misty. We both came to say thank you to all of you. Um, that was a dealing with the traffic concern on Waterbend Cove was something that was of interest to both of our communities and all of the members that live there. It was of interest to you in planning properly for the school. It was of interest to the community and the county as well. And, and everyone was able to come together and work on a collaborative effort to push the right path forward. And we just wanted to come here and say thank you for working that with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, we have Anna Hauk. <coughs> Dr. Stockton and members of the board, in December of my junior year at the Woodlands High School, I tried to take my life. I had moved across the country that year, and things were extremely challenging emotionally. I considered myself a fairly high-achieving student and put myself under a large amount of stress. For as long as I can remember, I have put school ahead of most everything, including my own health. That December, after I got out of the hospital, I went to my guidance counselor and asked to switch out of two of my four AP classes because I could not handle the stress anymore. The grades were not worth it, and so I was finally trying to value my mental well-being. My counselor told me it would look bad for college. I vividly remember leaving my counselor's office thinking, what good is AP credit if I'm not alive to go to college? I cried out of frustration that day. Even after one of my teachers personally advocated that I should drop the class, that was my counselor's first concern, how it would look for college. Do you know what message that sent to me? The school and the adults that were supposedly supporting me valued my transcript and the numbers that they saw more than they valued me, my happiness, and my well-being as a person. In five days, I will begin my, a new chapter of my life at Texas A&M University, and I am at a completely different place emotionally. This is not because of the support or lack of support that I've gotten from the Woodlands High School and Connor ISD, but because of the amazing support um, system of teachers, other students, and community members. I do not tell you my story simply to complain, but I do think it is important that you are aware of the message that we are sending to students into the community as a whole. As a district, we are saying, you need to value these numbers over yourself and even your health and mental state. You are only valuable because of these grades and accomplishments. That's all we care about. Is that really the message we want to send? The 2015 and 16 school year was full of tragedy and pain for all of us. It pains me to see the palpable suffering in our halls. 
It pains me to see teachers having to deal with the loss of students and even other teachers. It pains me to see no change in how we address the, into, the issue of mental health in schools. In an area full of people striving for perfection, so many of us fear appearing weak and unable to care for ourselves. But it is vital that we let people know that it is okay to not be okay. It is okay to not be the best or the smartest or number one. You are enough regardless of what your grades or your resume tell you. I know that as a district, you are under immense pressure to produce ratings and scores that are exceptional. But I must ask you, what are you willing to sacrifice for those numbers? The happiness of the students, the life of a student, the life of multiple students? Is it all worth it if we continue to appear so perfect? I think that at some point we need to address this. What do we as a district and a community value? What is the point of providing an excellent education if students are not healthy enough to use it? While my time in Connor ISD has ended, I want to be able to say that I tried to make a difference before I leave for college. So I have a few proposals that I would like for you and the school board to, com to consider. I think one of the most important things that the district can do is increasing education and awareness for counselors and teachers when it comes to dealing and with and recognizing students and fa or faculty with mental health issues or depression. In my interactions with school counselors, they're overworked and honestly do not know how to deal with a student uh, facing depression. They do not have the resources or the time to connect with and support students. Or maybe they just don't care that much. But who am I to say which is really the case? In the two years I spent at the Woodlands High School, rarely did I feel that the counseling staff genuinely cared about me and how I was doing. In contrast, teachers care so much for students, and I believe that many of them really want to make a difference in the lives of students. Personally, I know I would not be in the positive place I am today had not been for the support and care of many of my teachers, including almost the entire physics department at the Woodlands High School. They were there for me when I needed the support the most and when I felt that the rest of the world was working against me. I wish counselors were more receptive to the feedback of teachers concerning students who are at risk. While many students only see their counselors one or two times a year for no more than 10 minutes, we are with counselors for hours each week. They know us, love us, and notice changes in our behavior. For me, as well as many of my peers, teachers are some of the most influential people we interact with. I believe increased cooperation and communication between teachers and counselors is vital to addressing many of the issues concerning mental health intervention. Additionally, I believe it is important that the district makes hiring mental health professionals, professionals a priority in coming years. There is current there are currently no accessible professionals for students or faculty on campus, and I believe adding these resources is necessary if we truly want to make a change. If there had been any sort of mental health professional at the Woodlands High School, I would have probably been more willing to talk to the adults at school and ask for help when I needed it most. Instead, I felt as if there were no real resources at the school to help me in my time of need. The fact that, to my knowledge, a district as large as ours does not employ a single psychologist is incredibly alarming. We cannot continue like this. Before I lived in the Woodlands, I lived in Fairfax County, Virginia. Fairfax County has an exceptional school system and a history of excellence. In recent years, it has also had incredibly high suicide numbers. My freshman year, my high school alone had three students take their lives. There were two more who were lost during my sophomore year, both in the same week. My high school realized this was unacceptable, and they took steps to make more of a positive environment at school. In addition to the already present school psychologists and social workers who are available to students, neither of which are accessible at the Woodlands High School, they began placing more of an emphasis on students not only being successful academically, but also being happy and healthy individuals. The school, as well as the entire district, wanted the best for us as human beings in addition to us students. Slowly, the conversation surrounding mental health shifted, and my high school has not had any more suicides since my sophomore year. If you, you can, if you, if you have a little bit more, please. Um, the changes, even the smallest ones, made a difference. The school continues to produce exceptional students and is nationally recognized for its academic excellence. Some days, I wonder if Connor ISD and the Woodlands High School will ever, reach the, will ever reach the point where they work to make changes. The suicide awareness seminar that occurred in early May was a great start, but I do not believe that events like this are enough. Mental health awareness cannot be a, or be a once a year event. It is time for us to make a change in how we guide students academically, how we deal with students who are struggling, and how we discuss the topic of mental health in the classrooms or in the counselor's office. 
I think it would do a great deal to make small changes to brighten students' days and show them that while things may seem mostly bleak, there are things in life that are worth living for. There's so much more to life uh, than grades or extracurriculars, and I worry that we do not tell that to students enough. I hope this changes soon and that we are able to prevent any more tragedies in the future. We, as students, spend the, the vast majority of our time every week at school, and the school has such an opportunity to shape our lives and experiences. I only ask that you will take advantage of this opportunity to make a difference. I appreciate what you do as a school board, and I know you have so many constraints working against you, but I urge you to fight for the well-being of our students and our community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anna, thank you. Thank you for being here, and thank you for corresponding with me earlier this summer. Um, we, we take this topic very seriously. Awareness has been greatly raised in the last few months, and um, ironically, we, we, you mentioned Fairfax uh, school system. Our new assistant superintendent is, was in Fairfax. Um, and um, in addition to a crisis counselor, we have a new crisis counselor this year. We're going to add another crisis counselor mid-year. Um, so we, we take your, your, your concerns very, very seriously. We've shared them with the campuses and, and appreciate you being here and wish you the best of luck next year. Thank you very much. Uh, item three, consent agenda. Uh, there have been two requests removed. <laughs> item I, so uh, we'll now uh, uh, consider items A through H and J and K. If I might have a move. Um, so moved. Thank you. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Uh, item I, consider award for RFP, uh, excuse me, 3I, consider award of, of RFP 16-07-03, property boiler and machinery and crime insurance. A at this point, uh, I will uh, relinquish the control of the board meeting to our uh, Mr. Kidd because I am going to uh, abstain from any conversation or and uh, and uh, uh, on, on this item due to my be employer being involved <laughs> yeah um, any discussion well I, I, we need a motion and a second uh, a motion to approve yeah motion to approve second can we have a second now <laughs> discussion Yes, and I, w I was actually one of the ones that asked that we bring this up, and I spoke with Mr. Rice, and I think, Mr. Rice, you had some additional information. The, the uh, issue, I think, at hand was the increase in the premium, yeah. and so I just wanted more clarity on that yeah, for and, our and, board. Yeah, and just, just to add a little color to it, um, over the past several years, we have experienced one of the lowest, if not the lowest, property insurance rates there is in the state for school districts we have been very fortunate to have that however in the marketplace that's out there uh, this past year we've experienced some of the flooding that occurred here but there was also extensive hell damage that went across the San Antonio area and the Dallas area the small number of insurance carriers that cover school district insurances uh, had losses up to 250 million dollars our carrier alone affiliated experienced a hundred million dollars worth of losses so the whole market took a big hit and when that occurs you see a constriction for the people who actually want to to bid on on the products so we 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 performed our bid we we sent the bid out to 37 separate vendors five to six of them are, con are the ones that are actively in our market and uh, you know we we sent that information out to them we had one response um, and that is with Souls Insurance, and that is the previous carrier that we had. Um, the actual premium increase is only thirty-two thousand dollars. What percentage? The, the uh, percentage. Well, the, let me let me get to okay. the to the Sorry. the actual premium increase is small. However, they included a five percent hail and wind damage deductible per building. Uh, with that and so that was you know leading us to some some large exposure that we felt uncomfortable with so they had a, a, another option in there for a <clears throat> deductible buy down and for an additional cost of three hundred eighty four thousand dollars our, our, our initial bid was about six hundred thirty thousand the initial uh, premium but with a deductible deductible buy down of three hundred eighty four thousand dollars we could buy that down to the same levels that we currently have which is a thousand dollars per occurrence per building 
I mean, a hundred thousand dollars for a building per. <laughs> 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 All right, good job. <laughs> <laughs> and, and with a with a maximum cap of five hundred thousand, so we were able to buy that down. However, the overall increase is right about forty one percent this year. Um, talking with our insurance consultant, Mr. Joe Blasi, his staff is here to ask, you know, answer any detailed questions y'all might have. Um, you know, the, the market, you know, is tough right now for area school districts, and we're hoping that that with some of the companies leaving the market, there might be some more some more coming in. So hopefully there'll be, a, you know, a, a better market force next time we go out for bid. So, so what was that increase? It's about, net, about 41 percent. Um, um, six hundred thousand. So it's so it's so the total premium is one million twenty six thousand four hundred six dollars. I'm sorry, say again. One million twenty six thousand four hundred six. <laughs> but that's with the that buy with, down. So the, the actual policy that we've had in place previously only went up by thirty two thousand. Yeah, it was. Um, this is us buying additional coverage. We're buying correct? additional coverage because the because the women held deductible okay. that they had that was added. <clears throat> Thank you so much for that because that's that that was the the clarity I needed. I, I remember when everybody had a, a mold insurance, and then there were mold claims, and insurance carriers got out of the mold uh, insuring business. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, I think I heard you say we had thirty seven. We sent out thirty seven bids and got one, one response, one response. Yes. which that tells you the breadth of the market is not very big right. and actually i'd like to thank our vendor souls insurance for giving us the bid that they did give us it makes a lot of sense if we had a five percent of our entire asset value yeah, which is 1.67 billion which is 1.67 billion we'd have to take five percent of that which would be our deductible uh would, to be able to buy our our deductible down for this one year I mean like you said I expect that as carriers get out of the market and rates rise other carriers will probably see an, see an opportunity, opportunity to come in and undercut those rates and so we probably are going to have to pay this premium uh, this year if we vote to approve it uh, because it is what it is mm -hmm. but I think there will be more opportunity in the future for us to lower that is my opinion yeah I want to make sure I'm clear. The total deductible that we would now, with the additional buy down, would be how much? The total deductible is one hundred thousand dollars per occurrence per building. Okay. As opposed to the five percent. As opposed to the five percent, which is eighty eighty one million. Well, it's five percent per, per complete, occurrence per per building complex. Let's say Conroe okay. High School right okay. now. It would be the total value of every building there. You'd take the stadium. Uh, the high school itself, the annex, okay. the tech, and the bet you to add them all under the deductible. Okay. But uh, on the buy down, it's one hundred thousand dollars per Plus. each individual building. Okay. What's our claim history, sir? Claim history. I've um, been good, actually, very, very good. D didn't you, uh, Mr. Rice, to just to clarify in our discussion, that you said that even in the most recent flooding that happened in April and in May, we had no claims. We had no claims. No claims during that time period yeah and, and I think if you if you if you look so at our rate record. and compare it to districts really just just south of us in Harris County our rates are still very very good compared to those those districts I guess I'm still concerned with the one out of 37 <coughs> that, that's, 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 that's tough you put out a bid for and you got yes sir yes sir. you only have one response yes sir and actually, when we got the first, we actually put it out back on the market when the first time it came in at one. We changed some of the parameters of the bid just to you try to hope. see if, and still we had we had one response. So so the market's really tight. I'm glad we got the one we did. Yes. Any further discussion? No, sir. Uh, let's note for the record that Mr. Husbands is uh, not participating in the discussion and is also not participating in the vote. All those in favor of this uh, approval? All those opposed? Thank you, Mr. Mr. Price. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Kidd. Thank you. Item 4A, 2016 preliminary star three through eight and EOC results. Dr. Stock. Okay, we, we waited anxiously for these scores that just came in. 
I'll ask uh, Jim Caker, Secondary Assistant Superintendent, and Debbie Phillips, Elementary Assistant Superintendent, to come make that presentation. Thank you, President Husbands, Board of Trustees, Dr. Stockton. I am really excited to be able to stand before you and brag about the accomplishments of our teachers and our kids. Um, you know that uh, historically we have a legacy of excellence in Conroe, and, and this time is no different. Um, one thing, uh, I'm going to share the elementary scores, and Jim's going to go over the secondary for you. But one thing I want to stress, uh, we did have a few changes this year. Uh, one one uh, change that we need to note is that the number of test items that a student needed to get correct um, increased this year in order to pass the test. So even with that additional hurdle, our, our kids still maintain their high, high academic achievement. So in the areas of um, reading and math, you can see that uh, there were uh, gains in math even with the increased um, academic expectations. And then in reading, there was a slight dip, but you'll see also that the state dipped in the same way. And so again, that's a reflection of the, um, uh, uh, the increase in, in expectations. Fourth grade reading, excellent, great gains uh, in reading and in math in fourth grade. Fourth grade writing, we're really proud of this. Writing is a very, very difficult subject. Um, I think back, my mom saved some of my fourth grade writing papers. It was about a paragraph is, is all we were expected to do back then. And so it's very, very rigorous compared to what we've done in the past. And our kids maintained an 81%, which is very high compared to the state. Fifth grade reading and math, again, uh, these are the cumulative scores for the uh, first and second administration. And um, again, uh, slight dips, but this was due to the increase in the expectations. And then science, maintaining high 88% over, over time. And then finally, as sixth grade reading and math, again, I'm very, very proud of the, of the achievement of our kids. Slight decrease, but then you'll see that the state took the same kind of decrease as well. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Phillips. Uh, President and Husbands, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, uh, it's my pleasure now to share the preliminary results of uh, the 2016 star scores uh, for our secondary schools. And we'll begin by looking at our junior highs and uh, what you see there are uh, seventh grade scores. And uh, as you know, uh, seventh grade is a transition year for students and parents um, as they go from the intermediate school to the junior high, a little more freedom. So um, these scores reflect uh, the continuous great work that goes on in Conroe ISD. Um, but it also shows uh, when you look at these and then look at them in comparison to our eighth grade scores that we see gains that happen between seventh and eighth grade as the kids mature, they begin adjusted to the junior high setting. And uh, once again, um, we see consistent results across our district in comparison to state where we achieve um, at a rate of about 10% overall uh, above the state average uh, in, in all of our content at the junior high. And now I'll move to uh, the high school uh, with our end of course test. And as you know, uh, end of course recognizes the five courses that are required for graduation in the state of Texas. And uh, so these tests set a high bar for our students. And um, certainly uh, English one and English two uh, are very challenging tests. And uh, all of our students, because we have such a high graduation rate, um, eventually get through this. But you can see that um, you know, the first go around for our English one kids is a little more challenging than uh, we would typically recognize, but we're proud of the results and the work that happens in our schools uh, around the consistent performance that we have there. We move to algebra, biology, and U.S. history, and you can see, uh, once again, uh, we're strong across the board uh, at the, at the uh, school district level. Um, continuing to show uh, great performance, uh, and that's attributable to our, our great staff, our teachers working hard with our principals to get great results with our kids, um, and that happened once again this year. So um, we're very proud of the accomplishment, and again, these are preliminary scores. Um, you know, we'll get final scores later, as uh, Dr. Phillips has pointed out. The, process has been a little more challenging this year um, but you know you've heard that in the news and we've heard it too and um, we uh, continue to work through that and um, continue to look forward to great results from our district 
Uh, do we have any questions that we can answer? What do you expect this year? I mean, you know, there was some added rigor or adding questions or I'm, I'm understanding correctly. Do you expect any or do you know? Do you know at this point? Well, I, I think um, we continue to um, and we have some of our folks in the audience here tonight from the testing office. Um, Dr. Uh, English is uh, very much in touch with uh, the state and participates in a lot of those um, sessions at the state level uh, with this information and um, you know we're well informed about where we're going and working through our curriculum uh, folks and working with our campuses um, you know we uh, are on top of the direction and you know we just finished a week of staff development with all of our campuses coming in with Dr. Knesset who uh, is the, the guru of uh, lead forward uh, speaking to um, performance across the state of Texas uh, and um, we you know continue to work to build our capacity to address those challenges as they come along and so far we've continued to do well and specifically they're gonna they're gonna raise the passing standards again for this year so additional questions required to pass so um, we know that our teachers know that going into it. it plays right into the model that we've had long before the states had about adding value every day so it's not about passing for us it's about growing in every day and so that you know, we'll just continue to do that and sometimes we're asked questions about the, the, the staff development and you know I, I've seen concentrations I don't know for lack of better ways or or, or or focus on certain areas I might add you know for writing or whatever you know comes along was that true this year to address the I don't know. Yes, sir. Issues? Yes, I mean, sir. The, I, you know. Our primary focus this year with all of our staff development revolves around T test, which is the new teacher evaluation system. Um, but it's not about that system. It's about what it takes to be successful in the T test system. And to be successful in T test, it's about growth. It's about growth for the student, but it's also about growth for the professionals, <laughs> teachers, administrators alike. So that's the focus of our. Um, all of our staff development actually occurs tomorrow. Our district-wide staff development is tomorrow morning, uh, and it is built around that growth mindset and the growth model that plays exactly into what we're you know we're talking about. We we have no new big initiatives, which is really a strength of ours. Right? We don't change initiatives every year. We do what we do, and that's just get better every day. Um, and so that's that'll be the real focus tomorrow around the content that each teacher teaches. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Five A administration naming a new facilities presentation of suggested names. Dr. Stockton. Okay, the uh, um, Dr. Knoll, the deputy superintendent, is here to present a whole bunch of suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a very successful campaign uh, as we as we work to uh, name our new facilities. And so I'm just going to uh, kind of start with an overview. Uh, just to remind everybody of the, the campuses that we're talking about, we're, we're seeing the Grand Parkway there uh, is that diagonal line across and through our picture. And um, the process that we're working on now is naming the new high school and then Flex 17. Um, these are the two schools that, that we've uh, we started the process on. And just to look at our timeline um, for, for everyone in the audience, we started this process back last month. Um, we had uh, just a little under a month for collection of names, and I would have to uh, commend Ms. Blakelock and the, our communication staff. I think our website it was not, it not only does it look good, but it's functional and it's easy to navigate, which you know is a testament to to her hard work. But we had 173 uh, different um, people participate in the naming of the new high school, and 126 uh, suggestions came in for Flex 17. Of those 173 for the high school, it was about uh, 74 unique names some were repeated 74 and then uh, 72 unique names for the elementary school um, that came in now for the sake of everyone here tonight i will not read the list of all 74 names that were submitted but i will leave them up here for a few minutes for uh, your consideration and just as we look at the high school names i would remind you that our district policy says that uh, high schools should be named for geographic regions now, I did include, we had many proper names that were submitted for the high school. I did include those in the list, uh, but I, I would point out that the policy. 
Uh, <laughs> likewise, I would also just make the point here uh, that you are not limited by policy to take one of the suggestions on the list. You can entertain any name that, that you please. These are just suggestions that the community has brought forward for your consideration. So these were the high school submissions and then the elementary submissions once again. And these uh, elementary schools could be named after geographic regions or after individuals, um, either on a local or state or national or world level that would bring uh, pride and distinction to the campus. So you see uh, many more proper names. Comment that I'm not related to Rick. Yeah. Uh, okay. Duly noted. Oh. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I I, I want to comment because we've already gotten this, right. and um, I've read over them a couple of times. The commentary is entertaining. Mm -hmm. so, so, um, yes, ma'am. Yes. But I really appreciate y'all's hard work with putting them all together for us in a concise way. So thank you. Well, and, and two, I, I would point out entertaining some. So, you know, some foes always are, are some out there that may take that approach yeah, to a, a situation off, like this. You took a couple off the high school list. Yeah, we did. Indeed, <laughs> uh, I had some. I did use some editorial yes. uh, restraint. But uh, I would tell you, especially when you look at Flex Seventeen um, and and more proper names, mm -hmm. when you read the the reason why people put names on that list it's touching you yes. know and, and it and it speaks to the amount of great people that live and work here and that have made a difference in the lives of everyone around them and so it really is special um when when people take the time to do that and so it's it was very appreciated yeah on the list that we got i appreciated that somebody thought that we should have an ann snyder elementary yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's probably uh, no, no. about yeah. Yeah, that was I was curious if we could have two of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. Yes, sir. <laughs> Absolutely. Any questions from, from uh, either list or, like I said, we've provided you with the, the full. Um, okay. could, you, could you go back? I'm sorry. Yes, sir. The very first slide where you just talked about yeah, yeah. the naming, that, yeah, the timeline, just yes, so sir. everybody here is aware. So tonight we're just kind of going through the list of names. And then at the September board meeting is where we will go through the consideration of the name. Correct. Yes. Today is information, and then uh, at your pleasure, it would be included as a board item next month. Okay. Thank you, Dr. No. Yes. No. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Hodges, can we, can we discuss that just for a second out of curiosity? Sure. Um, with, with all the names we have, how have what has been the policy in the past as far as does the board have a committee that kind of puts it narrows it down for us or anything like that they have an open discussion of it next month and that's it well they, 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 <laughs> well, that's we come to a decision <laughs> I, mean, it, I don't mean to say that's the only option or not. Uh, but i mean you know it's up to this board is what the option is. sure but let me clarify that you know we're presented names we don't have to pick one Mm. Correct me where I'm no, no, next okay. next month you'll you'll come and someone will make a motion and, and if it gets a second then you can discuss it. If it doesn't then you can move on to someone else who has a motion. And, right. Um, and, and I might add that you can even change the policy. If, <laughs> if, well, no, you can't. But we can. <laughs> yeah. Clarifying, okay. No one person can. But so I mean the fact of the matter is next month is when we openly discuss it. There is no behind the scenes committee closed door session or other venue yeah that is correct Mr. <laughs> husband <laughs> sure. what's your what's your reservation i don't have a reservation i just you know 176 names for each one of us to go through is quite a bit i didn't know if if there was a committee that said hey we, uh, we just want to recommend it's not a kind of that, that's all i meant was for all of us to uh -uh. Well, what we've done in the past we've kind of each board member has brought their top five or top three mm -hmm. right and the rest we kind of just get rid of right so you bring your top five and then we kind of go from the delivery because so you've narrowed the list by i mean if it's so so there's five of us here today you're down to 25 right mm -hmm. six of us. okay so 30. fair enough that gets you down and there's and, probably going to be then, some overlap and then sometimes it's been one motion one second and we're voting yeah okay so i, I will warn you I mean, if the motion is the second, then you're voting on that. That no, no, you, you discussion. 
So, um, it, it's been kind of a interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a big fan of the. As soon as we show up, we throw a motion up, and then I have to decide. It. So the, 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 the discussion is critical for, for me. Okay. May can I rec make a recommendation that might help those of us that are new to this process? The condensed list that kind of consolidated some of the repeats instead of the eons of paper that I printed. Um, if we could get that sent to us as well, that would be probably helpful for. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Husband. Thank you. Thank you. Item 5B, Capital Improvements Update, Dr. Stock. Easy Foster, our Director of Planning Construction, if you'll come and present. Good evening, President Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. It's my pleasure to update you on our capital improvements we have underway within the district. Starting at the Woodlands High School, where we've been working on the girls' locker room facility. Happy to report this facility is complete. The athletes and, and coaches have taken over use of that facility uh, this month in August, and so it, it is operating as it should. As we move through those pictures onto the new high school, this one is Foster, starting. Just curious, what was their response to the new facility? I honestly was not there when they moved in. <laughs> so. <laughs> it, it's been sent to me and it's very positive. Awesome. Uh, I, I really look forward to the no he news is good news. Uh, you know, that was good. That. That was Easy only gets heard in five minutes long. I didn't think about that. Uh, but I'm glad they liked it. Me too. Yeah. Now, at our new high school, this is one that's becoming more exciting each day as you can start to see the project develop coming out of, coming out of ground. Looking at it from this elevation, you can start to see the athletic facilities uh, become visible. You can see the drainage facilities, you can see the building slab, uh, and all come together. Uh, as you see now, the interesting part, as we're continuing on the building slab, we're, we're about a month away from finishing the building slab itself. Uh, a lot of those pours happen in the overnight hours, uh, especially during the heat of the summer. Uh, so some of our staff has been working the opposite schedule as we are, uh, making sure that goes off correctly. Uh, the interesting thing that has happened over the last course last week is vertical construction. So the steel, the crane, if you're driving by on the Grand Parkway, it's hard to not notice that giant piece of equipment out there standing that steel up. As it comes together, uh, that it will very rapidly become visible uh, uh, from the Grand Parkway as a, a cornerstone of our district. For our 2016 campus life cycle project, where we did a major mechanical overhaul at Runyon Elementary, I'm happy to report Runyon Elementary project is open. Teachers have moved back in this week, uh, and it'll be cleaned up and ready uh, for the students when they come in on Monday. Uh, the work here was primarily above the ceiling, so all the mechanical equipment, the duct work, the piping, uh, fire sprinkler system, intrusion detection, security cameras, all those things got upgrades above the ceiling. In the classrooms, uh, we did uh, add the wall-mounted projectors, which brings that classroom technology back into in line with the rest of the district, and also upgraded the, the power and the, the data connections within the classroom to bring it in line with what we typically build today. At Caney Creek High School, uh, where we're replacing the roof systems, uh, that process is near completion. It was anticipated to move on past the first day of school, so it will actually finish slightly ahead of schedule. Uh, but the uh, areas around it, uh, around the building, uh, won't affect students when they arrive on Monday. <coughs> this project also contained various uh, elements of athletic improvements and life cycle improvements. This is a picture of Wood Forest Stadium where we put new turf down. Uh, since we've finished, completed the turf, we've also completed the sound system upgrades, uh, some maintenance items in the bleacher stands, handrails, things of that nature around that facility. Moving on to our CTE and robotics project back at Candy Creek High School and Oak Ridge High School ninth grade campus, uh, where we're working for cosmetology, welding, construction, and robotics at Candy Creek High School. Uh, what we're looking at is a picture from last week of the uh, cosmetology lab as it's, as it's coming together. Our primary focus on these campuses was to get the classroom ready. That's where the students start, start their, uh, their CTE coursework in the classroom. So those classrooms were ready for the teachers when they moved in on Monday this week. So as we move into Monday next week, these labs will be uh, near completion. 
uh, waiting for the equipments to arrive. So the the various items that they need for their for their trades uh, are arriving and being installed as they arrive. So what we're looking at here is the the welding lab. Uh, again, it's in the process, same process as cosmetology. The lab will be ready for next week, uh, and then as equipment arrives, it's, it's being uh, wired up by our contractor and installed. Looking at here is a picture from uh, last weekend where they put the epoxy floor in the robotics lab in the upstairs second floor at Caney Creek High School, and that lab is ready for the uh, for the students on Monday. We've also got a construction trades lab, and it it will be ready for students on Monday as well. Moving on to Oak Ridge ninth grade, where we're working on a welding lab. Uh, it's in much in the same shape as the welding lab at Caney Creek High School. It is awaiting the equipment and will be ready for students on Monday. Mr. Foster, can I just yes. ask, if you go back to that picture, I just want to ask a question. The red and black hoses <laughs> that are coming out, is that all a part of the air ventilation? That is. Uh, those are for the, the... For the welding? Yes, those are the smoke evac system for the welding. That's what I thought. So, I just wanted to make sure I'm not familiar with that. Okay, thank you. That's what allows us to weld indoors. Right. <laughs> Moving on to our safety and security project, when this project touched a number of campuses around the district for phase <coughs> one, and it will continue into phase two and phase three as we move throughout the district over the course of the next sure. year or two. The primary focus of this summer was to get the uh, some security vestibules to create the more updated uh, secure front entrance uh, for several of our campuses. All those entrances that were started are complete and ready for will be ready for school on Monday. The rest of the project uh, it pertains to security camera upgrades, intrusion detection system upgrades, and other security improvements uh, throughout those buildings. Granger Lane Intermediate Additions, where we're adding eight classrooms to increase the capacity at Granger Lane Intermediate. Uh, the project is on schedule and scheduled for a turnover uh, during the Christmas break. So it is right where it needs to be at this point. Uh, and the, the progress made even since the picture was taken is the, the roof deck is in place, getting ready for the weather to clear up so we can get some concrete on the roof and then start work on the inside. Moving into our new elementary school, flex number 17. Uh, just like our new high school, it is in a position where the site is beginning to take shape as the building itself is coming out of the ground. So from this picture, you can see the paving and the driveways begin to, to take their form. As well, you'll notice that the structural steel is also in progress on that campus. Driving through that neighborhood, uh, you can see the high school's crane from the elementary site and the elementary's crane from the high school site. It's quite, a, uh, quite an impressive uh, picture if you're at, in the area. And that is our update. Exempting the two new campuses uh, uh, amounts, how much, again, did you accomplish this summer in, in pure dollars? The, this summer, uh, this summer through the bills we received this month, we've put in place just over twenty-one million dollars. Awesome job, have everything back ready. For our <laughs> yeah, job easy. We appreciate you. We appreciate the the, the architects, the engineers, the, the the general contractors, the contractors that care enough that uh, we can't miss an opening day. You know, so uh, we appreciate all of you that are here, represented, and those that aren't. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Thank, Thank you. And to add, Mr. Foster's almost completed his master's degree in December, right? Sure. While you're uh, I will put you really on the spot now, yeah. sorry. <laughs> I, 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 will, I, will yes, I got another year. <laughs> so not only is he working hard for the district, he's working hard for himself. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Foster. Awesome. Okay. Uh, item six A consider adoption two thousand sixteen seventeen official school budget. Okay, I'll ask Mr. Rice to come back to the podium, please. Good evening, President Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. It is my pleasure to recommend that the Board of Trustees approve the 2016-2017 official school budget as presented and discussed in the public hearings. The budget is attached to this item in the format that is required to be approved. First is by function and the second is by fun function and major object. And at this time, I recommend the board approve the 2016-2017 official school budget. I have a motion. I second the motion. 
Motion. Yeah. 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 All right. I move that we approve the budget as presented in the public hearings. Thank, Thank you for the motion. I'll second. second. <laughs> any any discussion? Too. Questions? I'd, Rice? Down right to I just have some comments Please. I'd like to make. Um, I'm very happy with the budget as it's been done. I, I'm glad that we were able to provide competitive salaries for all of our staff. I think that's important that we maintain a very uh, competitive environment when it comes to compensation. Uh, I was very pleased to see uh, I, I, you, you had uh, some additional expenses, which I understand when you have added students. Uh, but I, one of the things, and I just, it just popped into my head as I was watching the hearing tonight, uh, was we had $750,000 in fuel savings. And I recall several years ago when we bought uh, more fuel efficient buses and things like that and I think what I'm seeing is some rewards from those purchases that we've made we made investments in in new buses for our, our students to have to get to school each day and we're doing it in I think a very uh, fuel efficient which is cost efficient manner uh, as well I also thought it was very important as I uh, listened to the hearing that our tax rate uh, itself is considerably less than peer districts that we have, and I'm very proud of that as well. Very good. Thank you. Any other discussion, comments, questions? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. <clears throat> Mr. Rice. Great job, sir. Item uh, 6B, consider adopted in a set order resolution, the 2016 ad valorem tax rate support the 2016-17 budget. Dr. Stock. Uh, thank you. We are recommending that the Board of Trustees approve the attached order re resolution to adopt a 2016 tax rate of $1.04 for maintenance and operations and $0.24 cents for debt service per $100 of taxable valuation to fund the 2016-2017 official school budget. This has been presented and discussed. The above noted tax rates are required to fund the maintenance and operation and debt service budgets for the 2016-2017 fiscal year. The total combined tax rate of $1.28 per $100 of value is the same as the prior year. At this time, I recommend the board approve the order and resolution to adopt the 2016 tax rate of $1.28. Motion. Mr. President, I move that the property tax rate be increased by the adoption of a tax rate of $1.28 per $100 of value, which is effectively a 6.82% increase in the tax rate. Second. Second. Any discussion, questions, or comments? My only comment, uh, Mr. Husbands, is I don't like the way this reads because our tax rate is not changing, as Mr. Rice said, but because of an 8.66 value increase in all the properties, your taxes do go up. So I, I think we're trying to make that as clear as possible when we made the motion the way it was. But I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah. I would also add, like to add, and we talked earlier about this, uh, uh, Dr. Stockton, uh, the the MNO tax rate at a dollar four. What the general public does not understand is those those four pennies above a dollar are uh, what uh, our, our previous CSO so. Uh, uh, pleasantly referred to as super pennies and they're actually worth six pennies instead of four they're worth a penny and a half okay and what I'm saying to you is that allows us to buy that debt side down and a lot of people miss that in the budget and we take this money and we buy that debt side down and without dropping those super pennies off and of course a number of times in the past five years have we or in the past eight years, I should say, uh, we have also dropped the tax rate uh, even lower. So uh, I want to commend you uh, for for an excellent budget. Uh, Dr. Stockton, I want to commend you and your staff for watching every penny and allowing us to keep the tax rate down because uh, everybody at Conroe uh, is, is not only known for its success, but it's known for its lean administration department. And that's because m more people do more less people do more excuse me and i want to thank each and every one of you for doing your part to keep that tax rate down because every time you save a paper clip it helps any other discussion paper clip 
you don't have to laugh. I was with you, man. I was with you. Yeah, paper. Was the whole time. <laughs> Erasers. Yeah. You got a motion in a second, I believe. Yeah. Oh, any other discussion? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like so. Well Item done. 6C, well consider done. Uh, go ahead. transfer of unassigned fund balance to the debt service fund and capital project fund. Tonight, I'm recommending that the Board of Trustees approve the attached resolution authorizing the transfer of $10 million of unassigned fund balance to the debt service fund and an additional $33,300,000 of unassigned fund balance to the capital projects fund. The above noted fund balance transfer of $10 million is required to service the debt during the 2016-2017 fiscal year and minimize the 2016-2017 tax rate. In addition, the $33,300,000 is required to fund the capital projects fund in support of the 2015 bond referendum. At this time, I recommend the board approve the fund balance transfers as set out in the attached resolution. I so move. Second. A second. I move motion and a second. Any discussion? I just have a question. Mm -hmm. So once we do these two, what does that put our uh, fund balance at as far as a percentage that is the same as we present that that presentation i did tonight at the 115.1 million dollars right. that was taking these into account oh those are already taken yes ah, yes. okay I, in I anticipation missed that. okay yes. i missed that yes. you're ahead of me thank you any other discussion questions coming no. all those in favor signify by raising your right hand all opposed like sign thank you very much Item 6D, Chapter 41, Status, Consider Option Selection for Property Wealth Reduction per Resident Student. Dr. Stop. Mr. Rice. Tonight, we're recommending that the Board of Trustees select Option 3, Purchase of Attendance Credit from the State to reduce, to reduce its wealth per resident student. Conroe Independent School District's wealth per resident student and weighted average daily attendance, or WADA, is estimated by TEA at $436,591. Conroe ISD wealth level falls between the equalized wealth levels of 319,500 and 514,000 as established by the Texas Education Code 41002. Districts whose identified wealth level falls between 319,500 and 514,000 per water are not required to pay recapture unless their adopted tax rate exceeds the compressed rate plus six pennies, which ours does not. Since Conroe ISD wealth per resident student has not reached the recapture equalized wealth level of $514,000, the selection to reduce our wealth per resident student is simply an administrative procedure. TEA recommends that districts in our, prop, in, our, in our property wealth position choose option three since it is the least extreme of choices available. The district feels that option three is the most appropriate selection. At this time, I recommend the board select option three purchase of attendance credits from the state to reduce our wealth per resident student. I so move. I second the motion. Motion and second. Discussion, questions? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Item 6E, financial reports. Hopefully the computer works with me this evening. We're here this evening to present the financial statements for the district for the month of July. These statements will include our general fund, debt service fund, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. The first statement we'll look at this evening is our balance sheet. The balance sheet includes our assets, our liabilities, and our fund balances for the district. And each month, we always like to keep our eye on our cash and investments. You can see we have cash on hand of $500, deposits in the bank of $466,000, Investments in the pools of $93 million. We have investments out there for less than a year of $43 million. And our longer term investments with TC and G Investment Advisors of roughly $51 million for total cash and investments in the general fund of $187,472,000. We also always like to track our property tax collections to see where we are. Um, we're about 99% uh, collections, just a little bit behind where we were last year, but we feel good about our collections. The next statement we'll look at is our income statement. Our income statement includes our revenues and our expenditures and fund balances for the district. Uh, revenues are broken into three categories. That's local and intermediate sources. 
state program revenues and federal program revenues. Looking at the detail of our local and intermediate sources, we can see that property taxes is the largest con contributor to uh, revenues in the general fund and debt service. In food service, it's food sales. And in self-funded insurance, it's premium contributions. And this is our year-to-date expenditures by major category for each of the funds. And you can see, uh, consistent with our presentation earlier today, that payroll is our largest expenditure we have. This is our 2015 bond referendum status report. We've currently expended and encumbered $196.4 million. We have an estimate to complete of those projects of $296.5 million for a total projected forecast of $492.9 million. Self-funded insurance, for the month of July, we had total revenues of $3.4 million. We had total expenses, $3.7 million for revenues under expenses, right at $300,000. Uh, for the year, uh, we have revenues under expenses of about $1.1 million. Um, at the Wellness Center, as you know, we're in transition at the Wellness Center. We had, uh, for the month of July, 376 participants at our, at our site. But, but please know, during this transition, they're holding their appointments to 30 minutes as the staff get used to the new computer system and everything. So we will see that participation ramp up, especially here at the beginning of school. But as they get those times back down to 20, 15 to 20 minutes uh, per appointment. So we should see that increasing. Our investments for the month of July, par value at the end of, end of July was $345 million. The wham of the pools is one day, and they're yielding about 60 basis points. The wham of our shorter term investments, which are less than a year, is 53 days, and they're yielding 72 basis points. The wham of our investments with TCG Investment Advisors is 612 days, and we're yielding uh, just about 97 basis points. So as we uh, look at the combined portfolio, our, our WAM is 93 days, and we're yielding 66.42 basis points. And the yielded maturity of the 90-day T-bill, which is our benchmark, is a little over 25 basis points. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good job, Mr. Ryan. Item 9A, consider revisions to the local bond policy, CV, FD, and FL. I'll ask Mrs. Gladys to present this item. Thank you, Dr. Stockton, Mr. Husbands, and members of the board. We're asking you to consider tonight um, revising three district policies. Um, none of them are major changes, but they all are uh, changes that would be helpful to administration. And policy CV, that's our construction policy. And currently, the contract approval amount for like, professional services and things like that, or for uh, uh, minor um, uh, facility adjustments and things like that, is $50,000. We would like to increase that contract amount to $100,000 to make it commensurate with what the change order approval amount for board approval is. It would make it simpler to uh, administer that and to make sure that we were in compliance with that. And so that's one recommendation. And policy FD. Um, the admissions policy, there's two changes we're recommending. One is really just to bring in the line what we've been practicing. The policy currently requires that the um, campuses annually check residency for each student. And they, they, many of them have not because they just simply can't, don't have the staff to do it. And, and I don't think they feel that it's really an effective use of resources. We usually find out when students don't live in our schools anymore. We get return mail, neighbors. Um, share that information oftentimes with us and so um, we are able to track those down and there's nothing that with this change that would keep us from checking on anybody anytime we wanted to make sure they did resign in the district or in that attendance zone we also would like to add just a few words saying that we might in addition to standardized tests use district created tests when we get students from private or home schools to help place them um, that's because sometimes we don't have a standardized test available for a certain grade level and finally, in FL, uh, you're going to be seeing a lot of this change that I'm recommending in FL. And FL has a reference to No Child Left Behind. As you know, that law expired and was replaced. Um, so we are just deleting that reference. Everything else in the policy remains the same. Our student um, directory information is private unless, um, and, and so that's been a very popular thing in our district. I've had many districts over the years contact me about that because typically that is not what's done. So that remains the same. There's no change to that. 
and then next month, um, I'll ask you to, you know, if you will adopt these policies, but I'll also be bringing you another policy update, many of which contain references to removing um, no child left behind to them. So it won't be hugely substantive, but there'll be a lot of policies that'll be changing. Do we need a motion? No, we no, 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 Consider them this month. Yes, just mm. yes. Mm -hmm. Vote on them next month. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yes. Can I ask a question? Yes. You always get nervous when I ask my question. Yeah, well, you know. Uh, the standard test that you're talking about for the homeschool, who would write that? You said we would have our own. Is there? We'd use a benchmark exam or something like that to help place a student who hadn't been in a traditional school when they come. What do we do right now? Well, we use those now, and if we don't have, we're currently using our um, own assessments, but we wanted to add it to the language of the policy to make sure it was clear to anyone who read it that it could be a standardized or a, you know, a district A CISD assessment. test. Correct. <laughs> Correct. That's what we want it to be. Well, what no, it would be either or. It'd be the discretion of the campus. They'd have several tools available to them to assess the student's, you know, ability level to place them properly in their grade. You're just Mason. simply aligning the practice with the policy. Exactly. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. Thank you. Well, what does it mean to place them? Let's say, for example, a student maybe who'd been homeschooled and the parent comes and reports okay. that they're in fifth grade, we would give them a fifth grade maybe benchmark exam or something to determine if they really are appropriate to place okay. in fifth grade. You mean grade one? Yeah. Probably more like high school. I understand. You know, got yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It makes sense. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Uh, I, uh, yeah. I, go ahead. Before we adjourn, I'd like to say something real quick. I just want to echo uh, what Dr. Stockton said earlier, um, the young woman, I believe, Anna. I just want to applaud your courage tonight, coming and speaking before the board, and I just want you to know that we heard you and we take those issues very seriously. And uh, yeah, I will, as a word of encouragement, as recently as last Monday, several community leaders, um, Montgomery County nonprofits, and the uh, crisis counselor of CISD had had a meeting addressing these issues and there's changes or progress I should say being made uh, as we speak uh, throughout our community uh, but thank you again for your courage and for your words and uh, we wish you the best at Texas A&M. Thank you. <laughs> and on a lighter note I'd like to uh, much lighter note <laughs> Order of next month's meeting, I'd like to have discussion, or I don't know if we need to put that in the form of a motion, have discussion on naming of the schools, or, or suggestions for naming of the schools prior to us motioning for names of the school. That makes sense? Well, except that we got to have a motion before we can have discussion. Yeah, this is a motion. This is a motion. We have the discussion prior to accepting motion for, for names. <laughs> you can bring that up next time, and uh, we'll, we'll do that. <laughs> you do it. Do it. So, so you're asking if in the next meeting we actually do a motion to discuss and then a motion for specific names. We can motion Under Robert's order. rules of order, we can have nominations, and at the time of nominations, we can open it, and anyone on, that's on the board can make a nomination, and then we can decide based on those nominations to cease, and then we can have a motion. Correct. To so, so Robert I believe we'll do that. that we have the motion, right? And well, then you in, get general, a second. in general, in general. But what he's saying is we can have nominations. We can have nominations so that each board member would have an opportunity, I believe, to present their nominations. And then once every board member has done that, you, I don't think we have limited to we can present all 72 if we wanted to. <laughs> Correct. Then Please once help. the nominations cease, then we can have discussions about the nominations. And come up with some decisions. Okay. Yeah. That's that's. So right. I believe that we'll, I believe that we'll meet your your. Fair enough. What you want? Yeah. Translation. Prepare for a longer <laughs> meeting. Ms. Gladys, can can you visit with me about all, all I want to know? But how do, whenever, how do whatever's it? legal, whatever's ethical, moral, good. I, I believe in discussion. That's great. I just want to make sure that we can get from, let's just say, seven nominations. Okay. To to one to vote for. I just want to make sure how sure. to do that. Okay. I'm not yeah. sure. I know. I, I'm just being untrue. No. So, I mean, that's what I was saying about there's a way of doing things and there's Fair probably enough. another I, way. I just, I just don't want to be a shooting match. We get here and just throw it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's fair. Absolutely. But anyway, we can visit about that. The nominating process does not have to be a, figure out how to do it. The nominating process does not have to be an agenda item is what you're saying. 
Mm. Doesn't have to be listed on the agenda. I think it would well, need to be in order for the board to be there. It has to be on the agenda. According to Texas Open Meetings Act. But the normal practice of how we have to have a motion before we have discussion can be suspended or turned around. Yes. We'll talk. We will. We will. Okay. <laughs> we will do everything next month. Got it. We will do everything next month <laughs> to uh, allow everybody to have their peace. So, you know, they're, they're, they're safe, okay? Uh, because I have no motivation to do it any other way. Okay. If there's. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Seconds. Seconds to adjourn. Thank you.